In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord, that I may see. We are blind. We are blind to spiritual things. When the eyes of our body are injured, we cannot see material things. When the eyes of our soul are injured, we cannot see spiritual things. But spiritual things are much more important than material things. Lord, that I may see. In today's Gospel, the Twelve Apostles failed to understand the prophecy of the Passion of Jesus. Three times, St. Luke repeats that they don't understand. First, and they understood none of these things. Second, and this word was hid from them. Third, and they understood not the things that were said. And that is the Apostles. In contrast later, three times, the blind man asked Jesus for help. One, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Second, son of David, have mercy on me. Three, Lord, that I may see. The blind man represents the 12 apostles who could not understand why Jesus, the son of man, should suffer and be put to death and rise again. The blind man also represents us, dear friends. We understand very little of the will of God. We understand very little of the workings of divine providence. We understand very little of the process of redemption. And yet, God's holy will is revealed to us. And yet, God is at work with us. And yet, redemption is unfolding around us. We need to recognize that we are spiritually blind. We need humbly to beg God for our spiritual sight to be restored. We need to confess Jesus as the light of the world. Lord, that I may see. Sin and its consequences took away our spiritual sight. Since Adam and Eve turned away from God, men are born and men live in spiritual darkness. The devil is the anti-light which men follow. The gospel of today is like an exorcism Sin blinded our soul, but faith heals us. Three times this is repeated. Listen again to the contrast between spiritual blindness, the apostles in this case, and healing faith, the blind man. One, and they understood none of these things. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Two, and this word was hid from them. Son of David, have mercy on me. Three, and they understood not the things that were said. Lord, that I may see. Three times the apostles failed to understand the prophecy. They failed to see the meaning. But as an antidote, as an example for us to follow, Three times the blind man calls Jesus for help, confessing that ultimately Jesus is Lord and Savior. And us, do we believe in him? Do we believe that Jesus is Lord and Savior? Lord, that I may see. St. Paul's epistle today confirms this need for our spiritual sight to be restored through grace, through faith. 
we see now through a glass in a dark manner, but then face to face. That, my friends, will be in heaven where Jesus leads us in faith. Let us call Jesus for help, for deeper faith. Let us beg the Savior Jesus to restore our spiritual sight of faith. All of us here, we need stronger faith. Faith is not about feelings and emotions. There are things to know. We need to know our catechism. We need to know what the church teaches about the Holy Trinity, the Incarnation, the Redemption, Holy Church, the Seven Sacraments, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the angels and saints. There is so much to discover, so much to be enlightened with. But beware, there is a risk. Careful, there is danger. What is the risk? What is the danger? The risk is, while we learn our faith to ignore Christ, the danger is, while we attend Holy Mass, to miss on Christ. All these good things, every Catholic doctrine and the sacraments, are given us to one purpose, that we should develop a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. But there are adult Catholics who realize only late in life that Jesus is real. There are adult Catholics who realize only late in life that Jesus is a person who is awaiting their response, not collectively, but individually. There are adult Catholics who never sat down alone and never thought of speaking a few personal words to the invisible Lord Jesus. For instance, Dear Lord Jesus, here I am. I confess that I don't know you. I am a bit afraid of you. I feel embarrassed by this very attempt to speak to you directly. And yet, I realize that you wish me to talk to you. You are personally glad when I take the initiative to sit down with you and to share with you in my own words my joys and my sorrows, my boredom and my delights, my shames and my hopes, my fears and my affections. Lord Jesus, I am nobody. I am just this girl, this boy, this father, this wife, this priest, this granddad, this widow, this divorced man, this lonely or sick person, this anxious teenager. But I want to know you. I want you to guide me. Please talk to me. Teach me to listen to you. Guide me to you. It is you I seek. Lord, that I may see. In conclusion, dear friends, next week Lent begins, officially next Sunday. Next week we are invited to follow the Lord Jesus towards his passion and death at Holy Week, leading to his resurrection at Easter the cause of our salvation. We ask the Lord to hold our hands, just like he did to the twelve apostles, taking them unto himself and telling them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem represents the celestial church. 
It is where God prepares for us a place in safety, in peace, and in joy with Our Lady, the angels and saints. We want to follow the Lord Jesus this Lent, trusting in faith that in heaven where he now sits and reigns in glory, there we will spend at eternity. Jerusalem means vision of peace. Lord, that I may see your peace. Lord, that I may see your glory. Lord, that I may see your love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.